Well, hi, in this uh, edition of Claremont Calling, we've got three very short um, video clips for you. Firstly, our uh, worker and student placement amongst young, for young folks, uh, Murdo McTeer, is going to be speaking about um, a, an event for primary school aged children, which is going to be on Saturday the 19th, I think it is, of, of December, yep, the 19th. Um, in part, it's kind of an early bit of a holiday club in, early in the Christmas holidays. In part, also, it's taking the place of the um, all-age service that we might have done in Christmas Eve. We um, can't have services here. So this is our, our family's event, our all-age event. And, and do please um, spread the word of um, that event taking place. Murder is going to be telling you more about it. Karen Dorn is going to be speaking about the East Kilbride Community Food Bank. Um, we recommend that to you. I know that we've been doing work ourselves to, but with Food Bank and with giving uh, Christmas gifts, but the, the work that the Food uh, Bank are doing is, is important, and you'll hear from Karen about that. And then finally, you're going to hear from, again, a, a short clip from Solas, from Andy Bannister, speaking about Jesus and Santa. There is that common theme running through the three things then of Christmas, and we're approaching that season. We're just beginning, actually, in the the season of, of Advent. And with our December prayer diary for uh, Claremont, which I hope you're getting a copy of, and if, if not, please do let us know. With that is also coming a, a drop-in reflection, as it were, to do at home for Advent 2020. It mentions, too, our reading of Luke's Gospel, which starts on Tuesday, December the 1st to 24th. It also tells a wee bit about our Advent windows um, that are going on, and we'll be putting out some more information about that and some information about Christmas services, but also there's a, a reflection in four stages of looking at different themes, um, and particularly Advent themes that are appropriate in a, in a COVID-dominated year. So we very much recommend, you can, if you can, make time to um, reflect on, on these things as, as, as part of our being in the world and as part of our preparing for the welcome of Jesus. Again, um, we've sent email copies out, and we've given some hard copies to folks, but if, we, if we've missed you out, if you have not had a copy of the Advent drop-in, do get in touch with the church office, do let us know, and we'll be more than happy to get a copy to you as soon as we can. We're also looking still for more volunteers to take Christmas bags to your friends and neighbours. We are hoping to be um, putting out 300 bags, some to members of, of church or church organizations, but also a number have been set aside for you to take to a friend or a neighbor just as a, a greeting from Claremont, a blessing from Claremont. And we really do need folks to um, let us know that they can deliver one or two. So please don't be shy, do come forward. It's a, an opportunity to, to build contacts and connections with others and to extend a, a greeting hand to folks. Too often we hear folks say things like the church is always looking for money or something like that. Well, we're not. And um, we do want good news to be out there. We do want blessing to be out there. We do want sharing to be out there. But we need our, your help to do that. So please, um, if you can think of someone to take a bag or two, too, then, then let us know. In the bag, amongst a number of goodies, is also going to be a new CD that the praise band have uh, just are re been recording. And I've got here just the, what's going to be the cover of the CD. This is a um, work that's been done by Stuart McKinnon. Stuart, thanks very much. It's, it looks absolutely great. Um, but not just will the cover um, be very good, the CD itself uh, will be very good. Um, so, Please, again, do help us to share the good news by volunteering to take a bag to someone. Okay, so that's us for Claremont Calling, all these Christmas things going on. I know it's a lot, but it is an exciting time of year, and it's good to know that the church is still on the move, the church is still active, even though the building's not as open as we, as we want it to be. It doesn't mean that Christmas isn't going to happen. It doesn't mean that Jesus is not here. He is. God bless. Hiya folks, it's Murdo here. I'm really excited to tell you about what's coming up for young people in our um, Christmas period. Like usual, we have um, Renew and Crossword still going up up until the school holidays. Um, but we are excited to announce that we have something very similar to how we ran our holiday clubs um, this summer. It's a one-off event during um, the Advent period um, and it will have goodie bags like we did in 
summer and we're really excited to announce um, it coming up. Um, there's a few teasers going to be coming out um, on our Facebook page um, and we're going to be um, putting up a proper announcement and telling all the details of what's coming up um, on Facebook and other places on the 1st of December. So keep your eyes out um, for that. It will be similar to how we ran our holiday club with crafts and games and stories, but we've also got some more um, fun Christmassy type activities thrown in there for the young people to really engage with and enjoy. So if you have any um, children or grandchildren or neighbours' children or anyone that you think would be interested in this, um, I highly encourage you to tell them about it. Um, we are doing this, um, it will be on a Saturday um, and we are um, doing it for primary school children from primary one all the way up to primary seven um, and it will be um, suitable for all those ages so there's no need to, to worry about whether they'll be able to engage with it because it will be um, tailored towards them so I greatly encourage you to share it around and um, we are excited to do it. we've got a brilliant team working on it and um, we are excited to bring this to you so this is what's coming up so keep your eyes peeled for um, this children's event that will be announced fully on the 1st of December thanks guys have a nice day Hi everyone, I just wanted to take a few minutes just to tell you a little bit about EK Community Food Bank's Christmas Hamper Appeal this year. As we near the end of 2020 and a year that none of us could have predicted, a year where many of us have felt the harsh effects of isolation, separation from loved ones and losses of many different kinds. It's been a particularly hard year for our clients too who are not only facing poverty, but have been massively affected by loneliness, social isolation, depression, increased anxiety and fear, and increased feelings of worthlessness and hopelessness. We've also seen many people turning to us in the last few months who are trying to deal with the reality of the effects of COVID through redundancy and job losses. More than ever this year, we want to reach out to our community in what may seem like a darker world, but we want to bring the light and love of Jesus. On a very practical level, we want to bless individuals and families with a hamper which will contain everything that they need for Christmas Day dinner and lots of extra goodies. And where we can, we also want to be providing toys and gifts for all ages. The cost of providing a hamper varies depending on how many it's for, but on average it costs us between 15 and 20 pounds to produce a hamper for a household. Last year we distributed over 280 hampers throughout East Kilbride and this year we only see the need being higher. As well as blessing our clients practically, we also want to share the love of Jesus with them and the hope that Jesus can bring them this Christmas. So can you help us bring hope to your local community? Please give what you can. Thank you. I wonder if uh, you've ever seen somebody write perhaps in a comment box on Facebook or perhaps some sort of cheap second-rate comedian on the television say something like, you know, I don't believe in the tooth fairy, I don't believe in Father Christmas, I don't believe in God. I regularly encounter this, particularly around Christmas every year, uh, with smug atheists, and that's not every atheist, just a few, trying to make this comparison that, you know, belief in God is childish and immature just like belief in Santa Claus. It's great for the children, but not something for a respectable adult. So, is belief in God like belief in Santa Claus? Well, the simple answer is no. Let me show you why for a number of reasons. First thing is, I could take you to almost any university library anywhere in the world, and we could wander along to the philosophy section, and we could find dozens and even hundreds of books written by uh, bespectacled, bearded, you know, academic, serious philosophers discussing and debating the existence of God. I couldn't find the equivalent section for Father Christmas. Uh, there simply is no comparison. Secondly, of course, it's interesting to note that among the many slew of atheist books put out in recent years, my atheist friends don't see fit to write books with titles like The Santa Delusion, which tells me that even Richard Dawkins and his friends, they know that belief in God is not like belief in Santa Claus. 
But here's the more serious thing. What's the big difference between belief in God and belief in Father Christmas? I often like to conduct this experiment when I'm speaking to Christian audiences. I love to say to my audience, just out of interest, I say, raise your hand here if you became a Christian after the age of about 15. And you do that in most audiences, and about half the hands in the room go up. And many, many Christians uh, have found their faith in adult life. Uh, many atheists become Christians in adult life. But you ask the same question, how many of you here became believers in Santa Claus after the age of 15? And unless the local village lunatic is in the room, nobody puts their hand up. You immediately see the difference. People discover and come to belief in God as adults. They abandon belief in Santa Claus as children. And the fact that they come to belief that adults and former atheists and former skeptics and former members of other religions come to believe and encounter and meet Jesus as adults tells us something. It tells us that what it all boils down to in the terms of, in terms of God and the Christian faith is not at what age you believe things so much as this question instead. Is it true? That's the question that really matters. Is the existence of God true? Is the Christian faith true? And that's the only question that's worth wrestling with. But to wrestle with that, you need to think like an adult and not a child, and not use childish arguments like comparing God to Santa. But there's something else going on too. Is it true is one question. But the second question is, what difference does it make? Now, that is the question I think that really matters. You see, when I hear a grown adult try and dismiss belief in God by comparing it to Santa Claus, that tells me they are trying to avoid the question. They're trying to push the God question out of the door because they've probably worked out that if God does exist, some things need to change. Because if Christianity is true and the claims of Jesus are true, that means he is Lord and I'm not. And that can be quite a step to come to terms with. Much easier to ridicule the whole thing and pretend it's not true. But of course, at that point, I'm not behaving like an adult. I'm behaving like a child. And if you can't even think seriously about the God question without being immature, then maybe you should leave the grown-ups to have that conversation, and you can sit next door, put your fingers in your ears, and sing. Maybe something cheerful and charming and encouraging. Maybe something like, Santa Claus is coming to town. 